everyone, welcome back. I'm Dai, and today I am bringing you a new type of video from my channel. Well, it's not really a new type of video, but it's going to be a new um, series that I'm starting. And it has to do with my series progress spreadsheet that I'm sure that you've all seen me talk about or heard me talk about in some video. But anyway, if you haven't, and this is your first video that you've seen of mine, I created a series progress spreadsheet earlier this year. And the reason I created it was because I knew I was in the middle of several different series, but I didn't know how many series I was in the middle of, nor did I know how many volumes each series had. So I wanted a way to keep track of that. And the website that I was using for that had actually closed down, which prompted me to make my own spreadsheet. So anyway, I decided that now that I have a visual of what I'm up against, that I would start trying to complete several of those series that I have ongoing. So this series of videos that I'm going to be creating is going to be called Finishing the Series and it will chronicle my journey to complete the series off my spreadsheets. These videos will probably be a little more spoilery than my wrap-up videos are when I talk about the books that I have in them because they are somewhere in the middle of an ongoing series. So I may say something in the synopsis of the book that may allude to something that had happened in a previous novel or while I'm talking about what's going on um, or what I have issues with in regards to the book, I may also talk about previous novels. So I just want to put it out there and make you all aware that this finishing the series set of videos will be more spoilery than my wrap ups are. That being said, they are review videos. So I will be talking to you about my feelings on the book and more specific things regarding things I liked or things I didn't like. I'm going to try this out and see how it goes, um, but I'm not going to know until I try. So here we go with my first video on my finishing the series set. So I'm going to be talking about two books today. I finished Tiger's Eye, which is the third book in the Stacey Justice series by Barbara and Nino, as well as Heart of Evil, which is the second book in the Crew of Hunters series by Heather Graham this week. I will be talking about both of those books in this video, and if you don't want to be spoiled on one or you're not interested in one, or whatever the case may be, I will leave timestamps to where both reviews start in the description box below so you can just click to where you'd like to listen to. But anyway, let's get this started. So I'm going to talk about Tiger's Eye first. Like I said, this is the third book in the Stacey Justice series by Barbara Anino. I have been borrowing this series from Kindle Unlimited. I borrowed both the ebook and the audiobook. This series follows Stacey Justice, who is a newspaper reporter, and she comes from a long line of witches, and she doesn't really believe too much in what her relatives do in the first novel. Actually, she's kind of trying to stay out of it. She doesn't want to hear about anything that they're doing. She really kind of doesn't like that they're known for certain things in the community and she just doesn't want to have anything to do with it. So in this series of books, Stacy finds herself in a few different mysteries. Um, the first book, she finds a dead body in the rubble of her cousin's burned down bar. Um, in the second book, she is 
working out a mystery that has to do with her mother. And in this book, it's a mystery that's in regards to her father. At the end of the second book, we were left at a cliffhanger, um, alluding to what was going to happen in this third book. And that was that she had gotten a call, basically telling her that her father, who she thought had died because of something that she had said to him when she was small, was actually murdered. And so in this book, she's kind of investigating that phone call and looking more into um, the circumstances of her father's death, what he was doing at the time or right before he was um, killed. She's actually named after him, um, which is something that we learn very early on in, in this series. Now, I know some of you may get turned off about the witchcraft portion of this series, but really I'm finding that the witchcraft in itself is rarely ever mentioned. Um, in the first book it was mentioned more, I think in the second book it kind of tapered off a bit, and in this book it tapered off a lot more. There wasn't as much of it in this book, I don't feel. And the witchcraft that they do is not like you'd see at like, you know, Hogwarts or in Harry Potter or anything like that. It's more omens, um, they're finding signs. They haven't done any spells per se. I mean, in, at the beginning of this one, Stacy actually does do a spell. And I should probably reverse and tell you that by this installment, she's kind of embraced her gifts. She is rather gifted. She's thought to be special to their like clan, um, but she hasn't been officially recognized. She, like I said, has no like real experience because she's been pushing away this kind of destiny. I guess. And so in the first book, she was like, no, I don't want to have anything to do with it. In the second book, she embraces it more. And now by this book, she's pretty much in it. So she does do a spell at the beginning of the book. And it goes wrong. But it wasn't really like I don't know, I guess it was more like earthly magic than it was magic, magic? I don't know. I kind of feel like the magic that's being done in this series is different from what we expect when we talk about witches and, you know, the type of witches that are brewing things in cauldrons and wear black and have pointy hats and things like that. I it, it it just feels different to me and I don't know if that's part of the reason why I'm not enjoying this series as much as I thought I would. I um, ended up rating all three books that I've read so far three stars, which basically means that it is good enough that I'm going to continue. That being said, I'm kind of hoping something more exciting happens. I mean, she is investigating these things, but I feel like in the first two books, she was more like involved. There was more things happening with the investigation, I guess. Um, more suspense as to situations where she was getting herself in danger by investigating these things. And this one, she did get into a situation like that, but it was very short. I'm not at that point with this series where I'm like, oh my gosh, I really need to pick up the next volume, or oh my gosh, I really need to know what happens next. I kind of just go through them passively, I guess you could say. And so, like I said, this one follows her investigating the murder of her father. 
we definitely get a clear ending and it was kind of shocking who the culprit of it was um, but yeah I'm not I'm not hating the series but I'm not really enjoying it as well I am going to continue because there's only three more volumes left in this um, series like I said I am listening to it as well as reading it the audiobook narrator in the first volume didn't do a very good job in the second volume she was better and I feel like in this third volume she was better yet so I'm looking forward to see what she brings when she does the fourth audiobook at least I think she's doing the fourth audiobook um, but yeah I just I don't know I thought there was going to be a love triangle in this series there doesn't seem to be um, it seems like she's pretty set on one and she's not like dating two people at one time which I appreciate but at the same time they still allude to the fact that she had dated this other guy and they still collaborate on investigations with each other and she still like talks about how she you know used to feel about him when they were dating and things that attracted her to him but the two guys that are involved in her life seem to get along with each other and have a respect for each other which again I like I just I don't know I feel uncomfortable when she's like seriously dating one of these guys yet she still like makes comments about her ex even though it's in her head which makes me feel like she's not over him yet and so that kind of makes me a little bit uncomfortable Stacy has a familiar um, it's a great Dane named Thor and so there's a lot of interaction um, between her and her dog and Thor definitely gets involved in the investigations and helps her out of dangerous situations and even alerts her to danger which is interesting something else that bothered me about this series is the fact that we're introduced to someone actually two people in Bloodstone which is the second installment and they're not even mentioned in this third book so I don't know what happened to them or if we're gonna see them later but I thought they were gonna be integral characters um, to this storyline but I guess I was mistaken so yeah that was a little confusing for me but like I said all in all I am enjoying this series even though it's not more than it was good um, my thoughts on this series have been pretty consistent from the first one and so hopefully as the series continues my thoughts on it will be more favorable but for now I am enjoying it and will be continuing not immediately but in the near future so now I'm going to talk about Heart of Evil which is the second book in the Crew of Hunters series by Heather Graham the Crew of Hunters series is a series that I've been meaning to get into for a long time I've heard Sarah from Steeped in Books talk about it a lot and it just seemed like it was something that would be right down my alley but I never actively looked for it until I noticed that it was on Kindle Unlimited and because I am trying to use my Kindle Unlimited service more often I had decided to take the plunge and start the series this series follows a group of paranormal investigators and they actually are a faction of a government agency I believe they said they are part of the behavior analysis unit from the FBI and if that sounds familiar to you that is the unit that 
works um, Criminal Minds, the TV show. But this group actually does paranormal investigations and not investigations into like your typical serial killer, I guess. Each of the members in the crew of hunters has a gift. So like you have people who can see spirits or not only see spirits, but communicate with spirits and things like that. If you've seen the miniseries Rose Red by Stephen King, the group that goes in and investigates Rose Red is kind of like our group um, in the crew of hunters without the like professor character. So anyway, speaking of Rose Red, it's something that I really enjoy. So again, I thought this would be a series that I would really enjoy. But I'm finding that so far it's just okay. I've given both of the two books that I've read in this series three stars. Um, like I said, that's not a bad rating. It means it's good enough that I want to continue it. But it's just not at that level where I thought it was going to be. So in this particular installment, the second book, we are following a serial killer in the backdrop of a civil war reenactment, kind of. It's kind of hard to explain what happens in this book. So at the beginning of this book, there's a lot of setup for the civil war reenactment that's happening. and. Truthfully, I'm not really into like Civil War history or anything like that. It's not something that I'd actively go and look for things to read about. Um, so it was a little bit boring for me reading through all of the setup, then prepping for the reenactment and deciding who was going to be who because they're assigning people to the different like characters or the different sides and so a good portion of the beginning of this book has to do with that and then one of the civil war reenactors disappears and truthfully I don't understand why the crew of hunters was pulled in because like I said they're paranormal investigators and nothing paranormal happened. I mean, the guy disappeared and they were looking for him. But one of the members of the group, his name is Jake Mallory. He has a past with one of the girls that owns a plantation that is part of the Civil War history. It's called the Donegal Plantation. And one of her ancestors was a Civil War soldier. And so, and again, I should know this, but because I wasn't really interested in what's going on, I don't remember. And so, anyway, the crew of hunters gets pulled in and we do see ghosts. Um, come up in this investigation. However, it definitely deals with a real-life serial killer. There are sections of this book where we have chapters that are entitled Interlude, and those are all from the serial killer's point of view. And while I enjoy murder mysteries and serial killer mysteries, this is supposed to be a paranormal mystery series and I just didn't enjoy this one that much even though I gave it three stars. <laughs> like I said, there were ghosts, but the ghosts kind of have their own mystery and that one wasn't as interesting to me as the serial killer one was, even though I wasn't as interested as I should have been, I guess. Um, the first book, Phantom Evil, was more like my style in 
regards to paranormal mysteries. There was an evil specter and um, the ghosts were like more involved in the mystery that was going on. Whereas this one, the ghosts are kind of like more leading the investigators and Ashley herself to like finding the killer. And so they're more passive ghosts, I guess, not not actively involved ghosts. I think that's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I'm just not as impressed, I guess, with this series as I thought I was going to be. I do have high hopes for the third one because I saw on the very first line of the summary it said something about Jack the Ripper and I'm definitely interested in Jack the Ripper but this one with the Civil War reenactment and it alludes to the rape of um, one of the ghosts that we meet in this book and things that had happened in regards to that I just th this particular invas investigation was not for me I did give it three stars like I said it was good it wasn't bad it just wasn't great this is a really long series. I think the 30th book in this series is coming out in 2020. And I'm only on book two. Um, the Crew of Hunter series is no longer on Kindle Unlimited. So I had listened to the first and second book on audio. Um, and it is narrated by a man, which I thought was fine. Um, so I'm interested to see what my experience will be like when I actually read a book in this series with my eyes instead of listening to it being presented to me. There are mature scenes in this series. The first book I think was more graphic. I feel like the scenes were more graphic in that book than in this one. So if sexual scenes are not your thing this is probably not the series for you like I said though this book was definitely milder in regards to the presentation of those scenes that type of thing is not something I actively look for in my books and I don't read a lot of romance novels either um, but I don't feel like the scenes were just placed there to be placed there like I feel like they had a purpose I guess um, so that was fine for me so at this point in the series it's not something that's uh, bothering me or something that would turn me away from reading the rest of the series so like I said I'm definitely interested to see what my experience is going to be with the third book but so far, I'm still having trouble figuring out who is who just based on hearing their names. Um, and I think with their different voices being portrayed, it was a little easier. But I think when I actually have to read it without the audio cue, I'm going to have an even harder time figuring out who is who in this crew of hunters um, but I think that's all I've got to say about this one right now this video is probably really long already so let me know what you think of my new series I think this is a better format for me to be able to talk about books that are in the middle of series because a lot of times in wrap-ups I can't really say what I want to say or how I felt about installments because it would give away stuff that had happened in previous installments and I don't want to have that spoilery info in my wrap-ups so I say less than I want to 
but this way if people can see like what books I'm talking about and they can expect spoilers um, they know to click or to not click on the video so I think I'm gonna try this out for a while and see how it goes and hopefully it will be something that I can incorporate into my channel for a while. So let me know if you've read any of these series. I'm really interested to talk about these series that I'm in the middle of with other people. And yeah, I think I've rambled on enough today. I hope you're all doing great. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.